Uh, let me review what we've le we learned mm. in the last lecture. Uh, okay, uh, we learned about the radiation due to forced breathing sphere, okay, and we found that the sound is radiating in space omnidirectional way. In other words, there is no angle dependence. And we also learned about sound radiation due to trembling sphere. In that case, we found that radiation does depend on cosine theta. Okay? And the physical measure we used to, to understand the sound radiation in space was the pressure and what? Pressure, of course, velocity and we also look at the sound radiation characteristic by looking at impedance okay impedance in space and radiation impedance that is equivalent to with called driving point impedance of a finite string or infinite string. <clears throat> and also we look at the characteristics of sound radiation by looking at what? Huh? Yeah, before baffled piston, we also look at the sound radiation in space by looking at directivity index that compares radiation power with respect to radiation power of a breathing sphere. Okay? In fact, the directivity index of this traveling sphere was somehow related with cosine scale theta, right? That, so that, that, that means that the, there is a, some region where we cannot hear a sound that we call, in some case, we call shadow zone. Okay, and also we, we examined those physical parameters using ripple tank demonstration. Now let me ask you what other physical, vari var physical variables are really controlling the physical behavior we just talked about. What, what is the other measure? Sunghan, what is the other measure you can remember that can characterize those physical measures? Burst potential. Okay, that is one candidate. Okay, burst potential. We can characterize the sound radiation because velocity potential produce the velocity by taking gradient and the velocity potential also give us sound pressure 
by taking rate of change of velocity potential with respect to time. And what other physical measure does really control this physical measure? In other words, when we plot zr or zr equal to r0 or a, what was the x-axis? kr or ka? Right? Right? So kr and ka is certainly a window that we look at the acoustic phenomena. We do not measure, we do not see the acoustic characteristic with respect to MKS unit, but with respect to non-dimensional number, okay, that certainly measures how big the radiator is compared with the wavelengths, how far we are compared with the wavelengths. So that's the key concept. Okay. Depending on KR and the KA, we saw that the real part of the uh, of the uh, breathing sphere rapidly approach to the far field behavior and the imaginary part also approach to the characteristics of far field, which means that imaginary part tends to be zero in the far field. Okay? So that's the concept. And then we expand this observation by looking at the baffled piston that is oscillating with the time with the frequency omega. Okay. And then we measure the sound on Z axis and that was assumed to be uh, X axis and we have a Y axis over here and we assume that cylinder has a radius A on the Z axis we integrated the sound from this strip that we denoted that this is what? This is eta, and we have coordinate z, right? And this is the distance r, that is a square root, what? z square plus eta square. And the sound radiation at certain point R can be written using kirchhoff helmholtz integral equation. Okay? And we have to integrate along certain surface, in this case that surface can be this surface, and P on that position R0, maybe, maybe this is R0, If I use the center of a coordinate over here, well, you can use the center of a coordinate at, at any any point, and DGDR. And I have what G.
मुख 